It's 5.30 in the morning. What are you doing right now? Well, it's 5.30 in the morning. I am just headed out the driveway. I'm gonna head up to a Amish hay customer that uh, had some corn stalk bales delivered into yesterday. And the trailer was too big to get through the lot to dump them where he wanted them. So I wanna keep this guy happy, so I'm gonna run up there and I've got a friend who's dropping his skid loader off for me there this morning and should have them all stacked up by seven o'clock, I hope, and I can get uh, can get down to the farm uh, before my boss gets there is the plan. Well, I got all the bales stacked up, so I'm gonna text my buddy and tell him he can come get his skid loader whenever he wants to. I'm uh, noticing the lights are on in the house. I'm half tempted to run up there and see what's for breakfast, but I'm kind of in a hurry. I gotta get going. I don't know if you can see that little wagon that I'm coming up on or not, but one little known fact about Amish communities is that they do have church on Sunday mornings, but they don't have church buildings. So that little wagon is full of benches that they will take from house to house every week and rotate hosting church at their own home. Boy, you know what? I really am hungry. Sometimes all it takes to get your day started off right are a couple of text messages like this from your wife. It just warms my heart. Well, I know what that means. It's time to pay the soil back for all of its hard work all year long. As we're harvesting the crops, we're actually removing a fair amount of nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and other key nutrients from the soil. Some of it is left behind in the form of chopped corn stalks and shredded bean stubble, but some of it is hauled away in the form of grain. If we don't replace what we've removed, not only will it harm the soil, but it will eventually harm our own profitability. Since we know how much of each nutrient is removed by every bushel of corn and every bushel of soybeans, and we also know how many bushels we've removed from each acre, we have a fairly good idea of what we need to put back. Now some people rely exclusively on commercial fertilizer, and we do have to purchase some, but we also have these three hog barns sitting right here in our field that provide a lot of the nutrients that our soil needs. Every fall before we begin harvest, we take a sample from the storage pit underneath each of our hog barns, put it in a box and mail it off to Midwest Labs where they will test it and send us back a detailed report of the nutrients found in each 1,000 gallons of our hog manure. Once we have this report back, we know how many thousand gallons we need to put on every acre of farmland. So we've changed methods of manure application in the last few years. We used to load our manure into a tank just like this one. This particular tank holds about 7,500 gallons. And uh, you just haul it right out to the field with the tank and injected into the ground with the manure plow on the back of the tank. And that was a reliable method for years and years. But the main problem with a big tank such as this, and you know equipment only keeps getting bigger, is the compaction that it creates in the field. So now we've switched over to a drag line system. This large diesel powered pump is being fed manure by a PTO driven pump hooked onto this John Deere 4640. That pump is lowered down into the deep manure pit storage underneath the slatted floors in the hog building. On the other side of the barn, there's another pump that's operating with the bottom gate open to stir the manure and keep all of the solid particles suspended in the liquid mixture. The hose coming out of the big pump with a high pressure flow of manure is laid through the lawn behind the barn and all the way around the perimeter of the field until it reaches the center of the field where the distributor sends another hose out to the tractor that is pulling the manure applicator.
right now he's applying about 5,800 gallons per acre, which is the reason he's moving so slowly. The tractor is currently set at 2.9 miles per hour. There's only so much manure that you can pump through this hose in a given period of time, so the applicator has to adjust the tractor speed to compensate for the amount required per acre. A couple more tools of the trade are this hose bumper on the back of this John Deere tractor to push the hose around if it's in the way, and then this big roller to roll up all the hose when the project is over. Now although it seems fairly scientific and fairly straightforward, it's still a good idea every few years to take some soil samples and just make sure you're not getting behind in replacing those valuable nutrients. Well, I hope you've learned something today. I'm sure if you have, it was way more than you wanted to.